Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to continue the topic around static site generation and single page applications. If you remember in the last video, what I did is I took a single page app, an SPA, the one I did for Iron Maiden, and I moved that into a server side generated app. So I converted my view application into a Nuxt application and then deployed it on Vercel. In other discussions, we've always talked about why you would do that in the first place. The reason why we do that conversion from an SPA to an SSG is that a static site should actually perform much better than a single page application and give you much better SEO. But what I wanna do right now is try to prove that. Does it really perform faster? How much does it perform faster? And how much benefit are you getting from moving from an SPA to an SSG? But before we move on, let's have a quick look at the Iron Maiden application that we built. You can see the app looks pretty good and it's performing pretty well actually. And at the moment, it's an SSG running in Vercel. So let's have a quick comparison of the SPA and SSG architecture and see if we can guess which one we think is gonna be faster and why it should be faster. Okay, let's have a look. So this is the diagram I did in the last video. And in this comparison, on the left, we have our SPA. And on the right, we have our SSG architecture. In the SPA architecture, the entire app is loaded into the browser and then makes lots of small API calls to the CMS to build and then compose the experience on the browser. The advantage of this approach is that you remove all page refreshes and you only have to make small API calls to generate and deliver the customer experience as customers interact with the application. The downside of this approach is on the first request, that initial load of the application could be sluggish as you wait to not only load the application, but also wait for the browser to assemble the experience by executing the JavaScript. In the SSG architecture, on the first request, you actually load a static version of that page. It also loads the Nuxt application that deals with the interactivity of the app itself. This gives you the advantage of a super quick load of the page and its content, so the perceived load time should be much faster, as the browser doesn't have to wait for any JavaScript to load before it can display the content. So most of the work is done offline in a process using Nuxt and Vercel. The real question is, will an app with small API calls be faster than a big block of HTML sent to the browser? So my guess on this is that the SSG architecture should win on performance, especially when it comes down to that first initial request. Right, let's get started and see which one's gonna win. Okay, we've had a quick review of the architecture, but right now I've only got the SSG app working in Vercel. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna move the SBA, the original Iron Maiden application that I had, I'm gonna move that into Vercel. And then I've got the SSG and the SBA all working in the same architecture, being delivered by the same infrastructure, so we can have a real comparison over which one performs the best without anything else getting in the way. So let's do that now. Okay, now we've got the view application and we've got the Nuxt application all running in Vercel and it's looking pretty good actually. So let's click on the, each of the applications, open them up into a browser ready for some testing. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna open up the developer tools in Chrome and use the Google Lighthouse test because Google have pulled together all of the things you should be thinking about in terms of performance into a set of results that'll be easy for us to compare to see how each application is actually performing. So let's just do that right now. Let's see what Google actually says about these two applications and how well they are performing. So here's the Iron Maiden SBA app. We're now going to go into developer tools, go into Lighthouse and start the test. Nearly there, I wonder what it's gonna be. 
considering I haven't actually done anything in terms of tuning performance for the SPA, that isn't that bad, 77. So if I did a little bit more work, put a bit more effort in, I could actually bump that score up. It's actually not that bad. Right, let's take a look at what it says for SSG. So we're expecting a result much higher than that because that's why you do static site generation in the first place. So let's find out. Okay, let's follow the same process again. Developer tools, lighthouse, and press go. Okay, this is exciting. I wonder what's gonna happen. Oh my God, can you see that? 65. That's 12 points lower than the SPA. The SSG, according to Google, is actually slower or not performing as well as the SPA. I mean, that just doesn't make any sense. I mean, no, I just don't believe it. We've got to take a look and see what this is about and see if we can find out what Google's actually saying about this because it, to me, doesn't make sense. Not that, not that much disparity anywhere. Um, yeah, let's, let's dive in, let's take a look. So let's go back into Lighthouse and let's make a comparison against all the performance metrics between the SSG and the SPA. These are the results for the SPA. I'm now gonna overlay the SSG results so we can make a comparison. We'll start with the first contentful paint. This is triggered as soon as the first piece of content is rendered onto the screen. This is a great indicator for perceived load time and a good number for this is 1.8. They both have a really good rating, but the SPA is definitely winning with a 1.1. The SPA is also winning on the speed index, which is a page loading metric, indicating how fast visual parts of the page load. Largest contentful paint is the metric that measures the time a website takes to show the user the largest content on the screen. The good value for this is two and a half seconds, which both achieve, although the SSG just about achieves. So in these first three metrics, the SPA is winning hands down, but it does get a bit more interesting in the next three metrics. Let's take a look. So total blocking time is the same, but time to interact is significantly faster on the SPA, which is what I was expecting. But look at this, the cumulative shift for the SSG is significantly faster. Apart from being complicated to say, it's also complicated to explain. It comes down to how things visually shift around on the page as the page is loading. Although both need a little improvement in this area, the SSG performs much better, meaning that there's a lot less movement during the page load than there is for the SPA. So based on this assessment, the SPA is definitely the winner. Despite this, I still didn't trust the results, so I ran the test again for both applications to account for fluctuations in the internet speed and so-called internet weather. Even though there were fluctuations, the SBA still kept on winning, still kept on coming out on top in the Lighthouse tests. Okay, we've looked at developer tools and the results are surprising. <laughs> just, yeah, the results are really surprising. But let's not take just Google's word for it. Let's take a look at some other tools. Maybe we're getting some false positives or maybe Google is aggregating a lot of things together and is getting a better performance metric but not necessarily performing in a better way that we want it to perform. So let's look at some other tools. I'll look at Pingdom and I'll look at Web Page Test, which is by Catchpoint, both free tools, both fully available online. I can leave the links in the description for you to try out. Pingdom gives you a basic result, but the Catchpoint, the Web Page Test, gives you a really detailed report, which is really nice. And you can run a couple of reports and compare them. So let's, let's take a look and see what's going on. So first I ran the speed test for the SSG. It's hard really knowing what's going on until I compare it with the SPA test. But is it going to be faster? Let's see. Yes, it definitely seems to be faster. However, when you take a look at it, you can see that it's not really processing an SPA properly. So I don't think it's a valid test. But the SSG did load, so that could be a win for SSG. Now I'm going to do the same for a web page test by Catchpoint. So here are the SSG results and it's highlighted the web vitals in red. Now let's, let's see what happens with the SPA. This time the SPA seems like it has been loaded and processed properly, and you do get a nice bit of reporting with this app. And the results are not the same as Lighthouse. I guess because this is not running on my local machine, but running from a server. But again, the SPA results look so much better than the SSG results. Now what's interesting is that although the SPA is still winning on the web vitals, the start render and the first contentful paint seems to be faster. And also the speed index. Could that be hinting at something? 
As you can see, we're in British winter time right now. It's getting a bit dark out there. Uh, I edited the dog out. I'm back now. And just one thing before we move on and we do some more analysis, if you're enjoying this video, can you just scroll down a little bit and press that like button? I'd really appreciate it. And it helps to spread this video to many others. Thank you. Okay, we've had a look at some other tools and it seems that the SBA is still performing better than the SSG. Apart from a little clue in the web page test, there was something there about the start to render time and the first contentful paint. Those were much quicker and the speed index seemed to be faster. There's something we just haven't found right now, but I think there's something that can really help us understand what's actually going on. What I'm gonna do is use the feature from the web page test where you can compare two reports. And that should give us a comparison on the timeline. So maybe we can find out what's actually going on and get a bit more conclusive around which one is faster or how it's faster. Right, let's take a look. So I've went back into the web page test. I've selected both reports and then selected compare. And now we can see an actual timeline of the two applications loading in parallel. And here's the most interesting view. When you compare the two timelines together, you can see in the SSG app that most of the content is loaded before the SPA application, as the SPA application seems to load more progressively. However, the SPA completes far quicker than the SSG application, meaning it becomes much more interactive sooner. I love this chart that shows you the visual progress. It really gets to the heart of what I'm talking about. And here's one final demonstration to push it home. So there we have it. We've solved the puzzle of SPA versus SSG performance. An SSG does visually load faster than an SPA, meaning it will display a majority of content more quickly than an SPA. In this test, the SPA was overall better performing than the SSG, but where it counts, the SSG will load visually faster. However, when we look at the results, the time for interactivity, so the time in which you can interact with the app, is far quicker on the SBA. I was actually surprised how well the SBA actually performed in these tests. I thought it would be across the board more slower because it's actually loading all of that JavaScript and making many API calls. In fact, on that homepage, there are something like 30 API calls to the Ampliant CMS. And for me, there's another interesting point there, which is despite all of those API calls, it's still performing really, really well. And that might be because we spend a huge amount of time when we're building the Ampliance API to be super performing. Our benchmark is sub 30 milliseconds per request. So the front end application is always gonna be performing really well. Despite all that, I still would have had to have written some more code because I didn't really try to tune the application. It was originally to demonstrate content modeling, so I wasn't really focused on making it a production performing app. In some ways that makes this test even better because I haven't optimized either one of those applications given the framework they're running on. Before I move on, there are some caveats. I'm not saying that this would be the same for every SPA and every SSG. This was running on Vue and Nuxt. I also migrated an SPA into an SSG, and that may have had some impact. So I think for me, what's really interesting about this is you can't just choose a deployment architecture and expect it to be fully performing in every single aspect. I think what you gotta do is look at your overall architecture, look at what you're trying to achieve, look at the APIs you're using and the experience you want and where you're gonna try and deliver this application to, and then start looking at the deployment architectures and maybe do some testing yourself to see which you feel most happy with. Because whichever route you go down, you're always going to be making some compromises. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. I certainly enjoyed going through the process and I enjoyed sharing it with you. And if you've got any comments or you disagree with anything that I'm saying, please just put them in the comments section. If you like this video, press that like button. But for now, it's time to say thank you, goodbye, and I'll see you next time.